Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about tests for parallelograms. So before this video, you should have watched the lesson about just the properties of a parallelogram, how you know if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and things like that. So here is gonna be how we know for a fact based on certain specific given information um, that if it meets one of these requirements, it's definitely a parallelogram. So it says, if a quadrilateral has each pair of opposite sides parallel, it is a parallelogram by definition, okay? Or if one of these tests is true. So these are the different ways. Number one, if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, that is enough information to prove that a figure is a parallelogram, okay? If both sets, pairs of opposite sides are congruent to each other. Or if you just see both pairs of opposite angles are congruent to each other, that's enough information to prove that it's a parallelogram. If you're given a quadrilateral and you're given information that the diagonals bisect each other and that's it, that's also by definition going to be a parallelogram. Or if one pair of the opposite sides is both congruent and parallel, and it really should say if one pair of opposite sides, I missed the word opposite, but if you just have one pair of sides opposite that are both congruent to each other and parallel to each other, that's enough to prove that it is in fact a parallelogram. So based on that information, it says here, are the following figures parallelograms? So if I gave you this first diagram, 5, 12, 5, 12, you would be able to say yes, and it's because opposite sides are congruent to each other. If I gave you this diagram where one pair of opposite sides congruent and one pair of opposite angles congruent, unfortunately, that's not any of the tests. That's just not enough information, unfortunately. So I can't prove that it's in fact a parallelogram. Here, 14 and 14, so one pair of opposite sides are congruent to each other. Now, things that we do know about a parallelogram, okay, is that um, if you have 180, something we need to remember about consecutive interiors, 100 plus 80 is 180, which means that these two interior angles are actually um, consecutive interiors. So if they're consecutive, it actually means that the top line and the bottom line here are parallel to each other. And this line here is like that transversal. So technically, this is enough information to prove it. In this diagram, all of the angles are congruent to each other. Um, yep, opposite angles are definitely congruent. In this one, we see the diagonals. Uh, this diagonal is definitely bisected into 5 and 5. But this diagonal here is a 5.1 and a 4.9. They're not they're not equal. So by test number three, the two diagonals do not bisect each other. Therefore, it's not a parallelogram. And this one here, I've got one diagonal bisected, one pair of opposite sides congruent. Again, it's just not enough information. So what I also want to show you is that you can actually prove on the coordinate plane whether or not four ordered pairs create a parallelogram is by either using just the slope formula or using the distance formula, using slope and distance, or using the midpoint formula. And any of these strategies are going to be able to give you the answer. So first I want to show you in green what it means to just use the slope formula to prove that um, a figure is a parallelogram. So if I gave you these ordered pairs and you graphed it, all you would need to do is basically prove that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. And we know they're going to be parallel to each other if they have the same slope. So if I calculated the slope of AB, which is 3, and the slope of the opposite side CD, and I also got 3, that proves that I have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Then if I go BC is 0, the slope of AD is also 0, that's another set of opposite sides that are parallel. So using the slope formula is one of the strategies you can use to prove and if I do that, I do have enough information here to prove that, yes, it is a parallelogram. The second strategy is by using the distance formula. So I could prove whether or not this figure here is a parallelogram, which visually I think we can already tell it's definitely not going to be. But just by using the distance formula and saying, okay, I'm going to measure the lengths of the opposite sides. So I'm going to measure the length of AB. The length of AB is 4 units. And I go to measure the length of the opposite side DC. And when I do that, I get a different length. So the moment you use the distance formula and you're going to find out the lengths, uh, the opposite sides and their lengths, the moment you get one pair of opposite sides and the lengths are not the same, that is definitely enough to prove it's not a parallelogram.
I can also use the slope and distance formula together. So I want to show you what that would look like. So if I do slope and distance, um, one of the tests was that the opposite pairs of sides are both parallel and congruent to each other. So imagine I go ahead and I plot these four points. Okay, imagine I go ahead and I plot these four points and I say, okay, I'm going to focus on A, D, and B, C. And if those two opposite sides are both parallel and congruent, they're the same length, that's enough to prove that they're parallel. So A to D has a slope of negative 3 fourths, and B to C also has a slope of negative 3 fourths. Then if I use my distance formula to say, okay, I'm going to find out the length of AD, which happens to be a length of 5, I find out the length of BC, which also happens to be a length of 5, that would be enough information. So I could use the distance formula and the slope formula combined on just one pair of opposite sides, and that is enough to prove it. The last strategy is using the midpoint formula. And midpoint formula would simply be about the fact that you have diagonals that are supposed to bisect each other. So if diagonals bisect each other, that should mean that they have the exact same midpoint. So if I go ahead and I graph this parallel, this quadrilateral, clearly visually I know it's definitely not a parallelogram, but just by basically matching up the opposite vertices, A and C, and then matching up B and D. If I was to calculate the midpoints of those two, the midpoint from A to C is at 0, 2. So if I go and I plot that, 0, 2, my midpoint's actually at point, um, I'm sorry, is right here. The midpoint from A to C is this point here, 0, 2. And then the midpoint from B to D is 0, 3. And clearly the midpoints of these, so D to B, the midpoint, they don't line up with each other. So that's going to be a reason why it's not a parallelogram. Whereas if I look at this diagram here, the midpoint um, from B to D, so B to D, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, divided by 2 is half, and then 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So here's the midpoint from B to D. I mean, visually, you can see it's definitely the midpoint. And then if I go to calculate the midpoint from A to C, guess what? It's going to be that exact same point. So when you have a parallelogram, the midpoints from the diagonals are going to be identical, which does mean, and you can even visually see it, the diagonals definitely bisect each other. That's all you need to know. I know this was a very, very super quick video for you. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.